video in this series, I discussed what ESRI story maps are and why and how you could use them for teaching and learning. In this video, I would like to show you how to access ESRI story maps. Start by accessing a web browser and point it to storymaps.esri.com, which I have done here. You will see a variety of resources there. Let's examine a few of the story maps. In my introductory video, I discussed two maps, the map of the Titanic passengers and the map of the 10 most damaging U.S. hurricanes of all time. So let's examine those for starters. In so doing, I don't want to just show you the maps. Rather, let me demonstrate how you might teach with these in an inquiry-driven, problem-solving mode that invites investigation, asking questions, and digging into the whys of where. To begin, let me enter Titanic in the map search box. Once found, open the map. You can see that this, like other story maps, gives you tools and options for exploration. I can see the statistics of those who survived and those who died right away. These are the passengers, not the crew. But digging deeper allows me to see that the survival rates are different depending on what class the passengers were located in. See as I click on first class, second class, and third class, the graph over here on the left changes. Why such differences? You could discuss in spatial terms where these passengers were located on board and the customs at the time about treating people differently. In what societal contexts do we treat people differently nowadays depending on how much they paid for certain goods and services? We could also discuss societal attitudes more broadly and also how behavior changes doesn't change in the face of a catastrophe. Take a look at where the passengers hailed from. What is the global distribution? As you can see, they're not just from the UK and the US. There's a pretty broad distribution here throughout Europe. There's even someone over here in Cairo. Most immigrants were indeed third-class passengers. Take a look at this distribution. Change between the classes and examine the patterns. Discuss passenger liners as methods of immigration and of transportation 100 years ago. Select specific hometowns and discuss specific individuals. In Denver, where I live, we had the infamous Molly Brown, who, after surviving this disaster, became known as the unsinkable Molly Brown. Here in the city, you can tour her home. Zoom in on specific stops the Titanic made and where specifically it sank. So it was built here in Belfast, sailed over here to Southampton, stopped here at Cherbourg, sailed over here to Queenstown, and then voyaged across the ocean. This place is this corner where instead of following the Great Circle Route, it turned directly toward Nantucket Sound. It didn't get too far along that route when it sank, which is right here off the Grand Banks. What influence did the Grand Banks have on the ice flow and the distribution of icebergs, not only that year, but in other years? To extend your investigation, you can examine another map, this one in ArcGIS Online that I created as part of a lesson where you can study the ice warnings, sinking, rescue, and eventual 1985 discovery of the ship. So in here I have the warnings that the Titanic had received. What's amazing to me about this is that if you zoom out, you can see that the actual route of the ship, which is this red line here, went right into the warnings. Of course, now we have the advantage of having a GIS at our fingertips. But isn't it amazing that it goes right into this pack of, of warnings? I'm going to turn off the warnings now and look at the rescue ships. Here are the rescue ships. And here's the Carpathia, which is the one that eventually rescued all those who were able to be rescued. So you can extend this story map by examining some other maps in ArcGIS Online along with a lesson that goes with the map. 
Now let's turn our attention to the 10 most damaging U.S. hurricanes of all time. What is the spatial pattern of hurricanes past and present? Where was the most damaging hurricane? What would happen if this same hurricane reoccurred in the exact same location? Why do hurricanes have the pattern that they do? Which coasts see the most frequent hurricane landfalls? Is it truly the Louisiana coast? Is it the Texas coast? Is it the North Carolina coast? Etc. Bring in an article stating that hurricanes are more common now than a century ago. Is that true based on further investigation here? Are severe hurricanes becoming more or less numerous over time? During what months of the year are these hurricanes most frequent and why? Make a graph of the top 10. Let's see. Camille, according to this data, was in August. Donna was in September. And so on. Examine how fast each hurricane moved each day. You can see that each point on these hurricane track lines corresponds to a specific day and a specific time, allowing you to record, based on this scale bar, how much and how far each hurricane had moved. What is the impact of a slow-moving versus a quickly-moving hurricane? What cities have been most severely impacted by hurricanes? What has been put into place to mitigate hurricanes, such as seawalls, early warning systems, and so on, and have these efforts been effective? Anchor your investigation to other resources. For example, read the book Isaac Storm by Eric Larson, an eerie book about the 1900 Galveston hurricane. What are the pros and cons of building it on a barrier island? Analyze it socially as well as from a physical geography standpoint. What impact did social attitudes of the new 20th century have on the lack of evacuation in the city until it was too late? Let's go back and look at the story maps gallery. This is only page one. There are pages and pages of these maps, and more are appearing all the time. See, by the time you watch this video, there will be even more than what I am showing you now. On the right side, you will see very helpful resources and links. There is a blog that keeps you up to date. You can also download story map templates so that you can create your own story maps. More about that in another video. You can examine maps that others in the community around the world have created. In other words, this is not just the ESRI folks who are creating these story maps, but other organizations that have diverse goals, but all are united in their belief in the power of maps to tell stories. This Workflows and Best Practices document gives you the workflow to create one of these, explains the process, the ingredients you need, and steps you through that process. The Storytelling White Paper gives a nice overview of the goals of this effort and provides further guidance. Designing web map pop-ups gives not only the how-tos, but the strategy behind the design of pop-ups. You can also follow the Story Maps team on Twitter. This is probably the best way to find out when new Story Maps are published, usually once a week. A note for you educators, there are more than enough story maps to supplement numerous parts of your curriculum. A note for students, there are many maps here that you might be able to use for your research reports. But I know some of you would like to go further and create your own story maps. In the next video, I'll discuss how you can make your own story maps. Thanks.